At 2.46 in the afternoon on March 11th, the sound of sirens echo from Misawa City Center as cars drive down the street on a cold and snowy Tuesday. The sirens remind David Powell of the tragedy that struck Japan three years ago. Well, that day started out like any other Friday, uh, normal you know, business as usual. Uh, came to work um, and actually, uh, you know, everything was pretty uneventful until that time in the afternoon. I was uh, working at Airman Family Readiness Center at Yokota Air Base. Um, on that day, we had just finished an exercise, um, kind of wrapping up. I had uh, our NCO, of uh, our readiness NCO was in my office. We were just ta talking story, talking about how the exercise had went. Uh, and the earthquake hit. It was kind of like two earthquakes back to back. First of all, I was off base at the time that it happened. And, uh, you know, I've been in Japan for a while, so I've experienced many earthquakes. But uh, there was something different about that one. And uh, the problem is it didn't stop. It kept going. It was so long that uh, I felt it were multiple earthquakes. But in hindsight, we learned it was one very long, about five minute long earthquake. And we were ready to go ahead and wrap up the, the day and call you know call it a, a work day when we started watching the uh, the TV. I don't remember if it was NHK or CNN, but it was a live news feed, and we saw the tsunami rolling into Sendai Airport, and then it was like, wow. I wasn't aware of the incom incoming tsunami, and as I left, uh, or as I was getting in my car, someone told me, don't take the ocean road, uh, which. Uh, I'll forever be grateful to them for telling me that because they had heard somehow that there was an incoming tsunami. And so I took a different route, uh, kind of the one that goes past uh, Jusko, Shimoda, through, through the rice fields, if you will. I took that route back down to Hachinoi. The lights were out. Um, there wasn't much traffic up here, but once I got back to Hachinoi, the roads were just jam-packed. Maybe before 4 o'clock, by this point even before, before, we'd gotten the phone call to go ahead and stand up our uh, non-combatant evacuation operations. Wow. I didn't see that coming. Since I had a lot of time in this traffic jam, uh, I was able to eventually check my cell phone. My cell phone has a TV in it. And as soon as I turned it on, I saw the pictures of the, of the tsunami rolling into Hachinoi port. So with all that, uh, also trying to stay in contact with my wife, uh, find out the location of where our children were, it was uh, a bit uh, stressful, to say the least. So at one point, we had 11 commercial airliners Uh, that were on the ground that had been diverted from Narita Airport because of the electri electricity outage. Um, they uh, eventually, I think, gassed up nine of those, but we still hosted or received uh, two airplanes full of people. So I think with uh, travelers and crew, we had right at 600 people. Initially, because I'd been in Japan so long and, and people knew that I'd been there, people were asking me, okay, well, what, what, what's the need? What do we need to do? You know, because everybody wanted to do something. And so I started inquiring through, you know, conne connections that I had here. And we ended up about five days later heading down to the port in Hatsunohe. Walked up to somebody that we, we saw out working. They had the rubber boots on. They were shoveling, you know, the sea slugs and stuff. And we said, hey, there's six, there's 15 of us, 16 of us here. We're here, you know, here to help. And initially they said, no, we're good. We're okay. We're like, look, we brought our own shovels. We got hard hats. We got food. We just need, you know, a place to use the, the restroom. And that's it. We're, whatever you need, we're here to help. It also made me proud. Uh, of both the response here by the Americans, by the, by the military, opening it up. Uh, all kinds of nationalities, rescue teams came in. The base was used as a staging ground. Uh, and it really didn't matter at that point um, who you were. They were just going to help people by any means necessary, really. I think that's the thing that kind of keeps me motivated and inspired is the fact that they, you know, they didn't quit. You know what I mean? And, you know, there's nobody asking for sympathy or, or sorrow. They're just, you know, they rebuild and they're moving, moving on. So I think that's, that's what keeps me going, too, is just knowing that the people of Japan, um, they have that, that, that spirit, that never quit spirit. Senior Airman Jonathan Guzman, Misawa Air Base, Japan.